When I was in first year, I used to wish that I could skip over the first few months or years that it took to get over that barrier of the uncomfortableness of getting used to medical school. I'd like to think that now, after all this time, I've been able to gather up a few helpful tips that I wish that I had known before I had started medical school. So for today's video, I'm going to start off by telling you five of my top tips that I have figured out since starting medical school. Something to keep in mind though is that these tips aren't just used for medical school. Even after you go on and qualify, or regardless of whatever course you're taking, these tips can be really invaluable. Okay, so for the first one, we're going to be talking about trialing different types of software. Now, this is a really, really helpful tip. Understanding a revision resource that works best for you can save you so many hours of time when you're revising. As I'm sure you know by now, being in the 20th century, and since you're obviously not living under a rock, there are so many revision softwares out there. And even though all of these softwares are incredible, you've got to figure out which one of these works best for you. The best advice that I have for this is to absolutely download every single one of them. Go on every single website, and when you have the time, just play around with each one of them individually. But at some point, one of these softwares will click. The way that your mind works, the way that you want to sort out your notes will align perfectly with one particular type of software. The best way to figure out whether these things would work for you, you can just type up on YouTube this particular app and then have a look through the tutorials of people explaining it. You might find that a software looks really boring, but when you find the tutorial, you realize that it has so many more capabilities than you thought it did. Now, although some of these apps do have in-app purchases, so many of these are actually free resources, especially for students. So make sure that you do check that before you go paying for anything. Like most things, when you're learning to use something, it can be quite hard at first. So don't get disheartened if you think that something's too difficult for you to understand. Do keep with it if you think there's a niggly feeling that's telling you that it could actually work for you. But likewise, if you're finding it too laborious and you're wasting too much time on it, just go ahead to the next one and you'll find which one works best for you. At the time, it does seem like a bit of a time waster, but just think about how many hours you'll save when you realize which one works best for your brain. And a helpful tip would be to try and find one that you can access online because you never know where you might be. You might not always have your computer, but you'll only have your phone. So having your files saved on a cloud can be so helpful. So you don't need to be lugging your laptop around all the time. Number two. Now I'm sure you'll realize when you come to university, but even when you're in school, is that everyone really does work very differently. So to help you appreciate this, I want you to think about it like this. Imagine you and a friend both have the exact same topic to study. Now also imagine that you and this friend use the exact same technique to study it. So do you think that you and your friend will both finish this topic in the exact same time? And the answer to that most likely will be no. Now, even though it's a small example, I think it really shows how important it is to learn what your personal learning style is. But the thing that most people ask themselves is, how do I find out? How do I know what my own personal learning style is? So I want you to do a little exercise to kind of start you off from realizing what your learning style might be. Now bear with me on this, okay? I want you to think back to a topic or a piece of information that you learned when you were in high school. Not necessarily a common knowledge topic, but something that you had to learn for school. And it has to be something that you remember so well, regardless of how much time has passed, regardless of whether you've even revised it ever since or not, something that's still in your head. Now, this can be a topic in history, in biology, really something you don't see all the time anymore. Try and think back, how did I learn that piece of information? Did I read about it in a really good textbook? Was I revising it with my friends? Or maybe it was a piece of information that someone told you on a school trip. Something like this can be a really good starting point. And if they worked so well that you can still remember that piece of information all those years on, what's the harm in trying to giving it a go now? It might not be that you were consciously thinking about it, but subconsciously, this was all going on in the background. Now, number three. This one is very hard when you think about medical school. I know that when I imagined medical school, I imagined sitting in on lectures, being in front of my laptop, typing away and looking like a proper med student. <laughs> I remember even in school, teachers would always tell me when you get to university, you'll have so many lecturers talking to you and they won't give you the time to fill in the blanks in your little booklet. They'll expect you to keep up very quickly. So in my mind since that time, I always imagined that whatever the lecturer was saying, I had to keep up really quickly on my laptop and type it all up. But you see, the thing is that when you're so focused on typing on your laptop, you kind of lose all sense of what the information being told to you is. So you get to the end of the lecture 
being so confident that you've actually written up every word the lecturer said that wasn't on the slides. But do you actually come out of the lecture feeling that you cemented some knowledge? Did anything actually go in? And sometimes, yes, I have to admit, it does take a certain degree of confidence to trust yourself enough to shut down the laptop screen and just be in the moment because your mind is racing. You're thinking, am I going to miss something they've said that's not going to be on the slides? Is that going to be on the test? And yes, there is a certain degree of fear that does come with that. But what you'll find is the more time that you take to kind of take in the information that they're saying, the more you'll make the cogs in your mind turn. And most importantly, what questions can I ask to the lecturer at the end? I'm sure you can appreciate that lecturers get so many emails and so many questions coming into their inboxes. So sometimes the best time to catch a lecturer if you have a question is at the end of the lecture. Now, if you've been transcribing the whole time and not paying that much attention to the content of the lecture, the question might only come to you when you get home. Whereas if you're fully paying attention in the moment, then you'll already know which questions you can ask there and then. And you've got to remember that most medical schools now and most universities are recording the lectures. So if there is a piece of information that you're not sure that you, that you managed to get down, you'll be able to watch it back even for a shorter period of time. And yes, this is a skill because your mind will constantly be telling you, no, you should be writing this down. You're not going to know this. But the moment that you get past that resistance, it can make lectures a lot more entertaining to go to as well. Okay, now number four, testing your friends. Now, I've got to be honest with you, sometimes this tip can be a little bit uncomfortable. I'd be lying if I said that we all don't hate it when we get some questions wrong in front of our friends, because it can be a little bit embarrassing. But sometimes the learning strategies that are a little bit uncomfortable can be the most effective ones. Not only can it help us to expand our own information, but we can be helping our friends as well. You'll find actually that the ones that you get wrong and probably the most embarrassed about are the ones that you remember the most. And in the long term, you'll probably recall them so much quicker than the ones that you'd probably revised in the first place. The added bonus to this is that by working with your friends, you can both bounce off of each other's motivation. So even if one of you isn't feeling it one day, someone else will be, and you'll be able to pull each other up in that sense as well. Okay, now number five. Now this is our final tip. Now this is to attend revision sessions. Myself included, I do find that this tip is one that students tend to implement quite late on in the year. As students, we all think that in the word revision, that kind of entails that you have to do your own work first and then get to the part of revising it. But the way that you should think of some of these revision sessions isn't necessarily needing to be if you've definitely studied them and then go to kind of revisit these topics. You can go to revision sessions, almost like teaching sessions as well. Now there is a shameless plug included here, but the OSCEASY revision sessions are truly amazing. The students are so smart and in fairness are such great teachers. In order to do one of these sessions, you've got to be pretty confident enough to do the topic yourself. So you can be confident in knowing that someone's going to be giving that session who's very good at what they do. The notes that you'll be given as well will have been trialed and tested by so many students and something that we all love doing is saving time and just think of how much time you'll be able to save using some of the notes that someone's already perfectly made. Just a reminder as well for the Ask Easy sessions is that they're not just done just before your exams, they'll be done throughout the year so you can keep them ticking over in your mind even if they're not necessarily the topic that you're studying at that time. But even with these tips in mind, what you've got to remember is be kind to yourself. These things do take time. And yes, learning new things can be super uncomfortable at the start. But by implementing things like this, hopefully we can get you off to a better start and get you on a better foot from the get go. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe down below where we will be releasing revision videos as well as other videos like this with tips and tricks that you'll need for your entirety of medical school. If you have any questions, please email at oskeasymedia and we'll hope to see you soon. Bye!